guest today is a two-time Tony Award winner, currently enjoying her time in her 13th Broadway show. Is it the, the 13th? All-Star 13. Is Terrence it? McNally Farce. It's only a play. Hi, Katie Finneran. You already introduced yourself. I introduced yourself. Hi. Oh, 13 you shows. So I interrupted you. Is it 13? Do you not add? Do you well, don't, you don't you add know, I, I don't, which is great. And the other thing that's happened in, in 25 years is that you know, when you first start doing Broadway shows, you go like, oh my God, this is my third Broadway show. Right. And uh, the blur. you know that you're kind of old and part of the community when you forget like right, how many right, shows you've right. done or which shows you've done or what show that was about. Do you know how many Tonys you have? I do. <laughs> Two Tonys. I wow, have enough for a pair of, of earrings. Wow. So sweet. Thank we're you. We're going to get to all that. But oh, hi, thanks. how are you? Hi, I'm really good. I love you. look beautiful in orange. Thank you. I it's love this. It's a good this. color for the set. People don't really realize that. You know, I, I had a little look-see because, um, uh, you know, sometimes you, I can look so washed out. I can look like I'm dying on, 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 on interviews. <laughs> so I looked at your set, and I, I remember this sparkly blue background. So I thought, my you, favorite color is orange. It, well, you look great in it. Thank you. It's a good color for you. So look at you. You're in It's Only a Play. So great. The all-star uh, Terrence McNally. Smash. I'm telling you, it's only a play. I saw the show right after it opened, uh -huh. and, and uh, some of my friends are in it, and I loved it so much. And and I remember thinking, like, wow, this is so much fun that the audience of regular people right. are flooding to the theater to watch us go through what we go through every time we do a show. <laughs> right. And how surprising, sort of like ER for the layman. You know, it's like <laughs> ER for the theater. It's like this is really what happens. With the blood and guts. The blood yeah, and guts of blood Broadway. And, guts. and, that, that, and that anyone's interested besides us is, right. is fascinating. Yeah. Obviously, you have you know, genius performers in the yeah. show. But that, that they want to know all the technical things that happen and what we wait for and what we hope for, our dreams and wishes and butterflies and rainbows. And they crash and we all die. Yeah. We don't really die in the show. So you're, you're one of the new, the new cast. Yes. It's, it's a, um, what is it, like a joint family. What's it called? One, two, like, like the Brady Bunch. Yes, like, Malik Controlli the, is, is in it and came in and then uh, Martin Short and I came right. in. Right. And so how is that? It like, was so great. Do the other cats welcoming, or are they like the, the they, seniors at the in the in the they, cafeteria? We not were talking worried to about you. that. They were like seniors in the cafeteria. <laughs> no, it's a, a you know they had their show. They're really great, well oiled, oiled machine. Yeah. And then we came in and just crashed it. We just came in and went. Oh, wait, what? I changed a little blocking, and I was like, Megan was great, but I can't remember dress? why she. New did. dress, not I Megan's did get a dress. new dress. Yeah, new dress. I'm yeah. so tall, and um, I like to wear heels. And uh, uh, Anne Roth, who's just like a goddess of, yeah. of costume designers. Legendary costume designer. She, the second dress she brought in was that dress, and I was like, oh, well, Done. I won't be able to eat on the weekends, but I look <laughs> good. It's a beautiful dress with no stretch. Nice. No stretch. <laughs> so when it goes to the uh, dry cleaner on the weekends, on Tuesdays, we're like, <gasps> the dress was like, did you have a lot of soy sauce on the weekends? <laughs> So you are the producer lady, and in the, in the, everyone plays like different types. You're the uh, the producer lady. I am. Are you, do you feel in touch with those those women? I mean, and you're like supposed to be like a first time. I first time producer. Right. And, you know, I actually love this character so much, and people think it's a it's for people who haven't seen the show. It's a woman who is very wealthy and right. very um, privileged. And she loves the theater. Right. The thing I love about the character is people think she's kind of dim-witted because she gets a lot of the quotes wrong. <laughs> uh, one of her quotes is, as Betty Davis said, fasten your safety belt. There's going to be some bumpy weather up ahead. <laughs> and... Uh, so everybody on stage, like, she's not an insider, but she is because she made the whole production happen. Yes, yeah, she's, um, she's an insider but because the, of her bank account. Right. But the way <laughs> I see it is this woman loves these people. She loves this place. She believes in the theater. She yeah. believes in creating a new history for the theater. Uh, and if we put you in a, a, a auto, auto garage... To fix a car, you'd be an idiot. Am I right, Paul? Right. I'm, yeah, I've done. I would an be idiot. an imbecile. Yeah. I would. It, we would all be ignorant. If you put me in a, an operating room, we wouldn't get the jokes that the the surgeons were. <laughs> it's three hundred cc's and the three right. four and patella. We everyone would be laughing. We'd be like, Yeah, I don't. I don't right. I don't get that joke. We try I to make don't a get joke like. Humor. Definitely. What about the sutures on the <laughs> antebellum of the quarters of? So I, I, that's how I see it. She's very, very smart yeah. in her own world, which is finance. Yeah. Um, and in her family, she's very well educated. Yeah. Beside her bed are, you know, Brecht and, um, you know, Eugene O'Neill and Uta Hagen books and all that stuff. She's trying to learn what she can, but she loves it. Yeah. And she supports these people. And, um, you know, our people can be a little snarky towards people right. who don't get the jokes. Right. Right. And um, I tend to love them. 
if they're going to pay for my costume. <laughs> um, you are a funny lady. I know you know this. Uh, I know you've won awards for it. Thanks. And, and you've actually, it's funny, I was like, I was refreshing myself on your 13 Broadway shows. Oh. And uh, you've, you've, you've done a lot of drama, but everyone thinks of you as like, cre I mean, you're really good at going sort of like over the top and playing these nutty women. I mean, you, you've you mastered this, right? <laughs> but at what point did you know that you could do that? When was the first time you did it on stage? You know, the first time I did it on stage was something that was completely uh, the antithesis of who I am as a person, was Lucy Schmeler in On the Town oh. in high school. It's just the, na the, 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 the one with the cold, the one yeah, with yeah, the, yeah. you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And I remember I did it, and I, I, I sort of lived this character, and I really believed in her. And I didn't think she was funny, but I believed in this character. And I, oh, I went to this performing arts school called uh, New World School of the Arts. Nice. And they cast me, I think I was 15 or something, and they cast me in this senior production. And um, it went very, very well. And I thought, oh, I love uh, characters. But I always believe in them so much, I don't think they're funny. Like the Julia Butter in It's Only a Play, I, it's going to sound so corny, and anybody watching this is going to be like, oh, shut up. Get ready, everyone. But Get ready. I really believe, I don't feel like I'm doing a comedy at all. Because th these people You're are the going through such hardship. Right. There are people who have put their heart and souls out. They're naked in front of you know a thousand people. This is what well, this is what I present. This is the story that I present. This is what I put six seven million dollars behind. Right. This is what I believe is a story worth telling. And these are the actors I believe in. And these actors are going to expose themselves and right. give their all. And then it goes awry. Right. It goes terribly wrong. Right. And it's crushing, and it's very um, devastating. Right. So I don't feel like it's funny what I'm doing, I guess. But when I'm when I'm in it, when I'm acting it, I don't feel like it's it's not funny at all. It's Eugene O'Neill. It's, it's not funny at all. It's like this is devastating. This this is crushing. And in a sense, it's the first time I can remember. I haven't really thought about the other shows that I've done, but uh -huh. I can't access a memory of doing a play where there was so much tragedy, and yet it was so funny. Like uh -huh. the crows that I do uh, often are confident, like crazy, funny, right. or drunk, or Miss right. um, Hannigan, or like, you know, very out there people. Yeah. But this is a vulnerable woman, mm -hmm. a soft spoken woman, a proper woman, a mm -hmm. well educated woman who is being humiliated. Right. And it's almost devastating to play. Like, I feel really bad for her. I feel really bad for her. Yeah. And, um, yeah, anyway, that's I, re I remember seeing you, vi I remember vividly watching Noises Off in previews and seeing you, uh, like, you, like, lose the contacts, right? Right, yeah. And, yeah. I, and you're, like, in your bra, like, you're, like, not wearing much, Yeah, no right? clothes, you're yeah. Wandering, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember, like, I, I remember that performance so vividly, oh. and I know you won your first, your first Tony. Award <laughs> for, did you know at that point, like, Oh, this is going to be. This is like a big moment for me. Not at all. And it was kind of, it was kind of like an all-star cast. Yeah. Right. It was like a big cast. You never and, know that. Yeah. You ne I, I never know that. And and to, to be honest, all the roles are the same to me. They're all the same. I feel like I give a hundred percent to all of them, and some right. of them I go like, "Wow, I'm really proud. I worked really hard on this one. I'm really proud of like, I feel like I really got this one." And then. Nobody sort of, it doesn't connect with what people. What was one that you really loved that you think you should have um, won a Tony for? Oh, please. Or, or just something that you wished you thought, uh, like, that was, I was great in that, but. I remember I loved, um, I loved my role in Iceman Cometh. Ah, yeah. Cora. And I really fought for that role because I think they were wanting to see me for one of the other uh, uh -huh. smaller women's roles. Uh -huh. And I loved Cora because she was so vocal and so expressive and so um, eloquent about how she felt. Right. Not very eloquent, but eloquent right. in her, yeah. you know, early 1900s non-educated, um, Lower East Side right. woman way. But um, I loved that. But you know, it's, it's the, the Tonys are also about, it doesn't mean that people don't appreciate your work. It's five slots, right? Four slots, five slots. Five, yeah. five slots, and it's, they're all great. Yeah. The, everybody on Broadway is at the top of their game, right. and most of them are phenomenal. Right. And they're different roles. Right. I think if we did the Tonys where everybody did the same role and then you were able right. to compare them, you'd go, that one was the best one right. or that one connected the most or mm -hmm. that one was th mm -hmm. the most engaging. But when you have completely different roles, I remember when I was uh, I was up for um, uh, Noises Off, I was up against you know, some oh of the God. greatest like actresses Theater in legends. history of time. Yeah. Estelle Parsons, Elizabeth Franz, uh, Franny Sternhagen, 
and Kate Burton. One of these things is not like the other. That's what I always say. <laughs> Which one sticks out is the one that kind of is proper to win. Right, right. But nobody really should win. I see the Tonys as a celebration uh -huh. of great moments in the theater for people who can't afford to fly to New York and spend $500 on a show. Right. It's a chance for everybody to, to see right. from... From the Midlands, right, right. the Midlands, <laughs> the, the Lowlands, <laughs> Middle America, to appreciate yeah. um, the work that people have done. But since people love you doing comedies, do you like? Do you say like, well, I wish they would call me and say, let's do Medea, or like, it's do you, so you want to do, wanna do like joke. a big? That's my big joke. That's it, but that's the problem with me is I think of them all the same. I really do think that I'm doing a tragedy right now. I know it's so corny, okay. and I'm, right. I'm, but I'm honest. I really feel like. But we're not, you're not making us cry. You're making us laugh. Maybe laugh till we cry. Do you want? Do you want to make? Do you want to like break our hearts and? You know, I love that stuff too, but it just it always kind of always the right story comes to me at the right time. So, yeah. I would love to do that if it was a great production. It was really um, yeah. moving and a great director. I remember I did a, a play with uh, Teresa Reback called Mauritius. Yeah, I remember that. And for the first time, I played a really a not likable character. Yeah. And I was embarrassed how much it affected me. I remember the, the audience booed me for the first time. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm totally misunderstood. You don't, wait, what? You, you don't really like They and booed, then, so you took your clothes off and pretend you lost your contacts. Totally. totally. <laughs> you, love me, you love me, you love me. How was the Annie experience for you? Mm. I'm really curious about that. It was, it was, it was tricky. Um, I feel like... Uh, so I feel like my, my perception is that when the revival of Annie came around, you were Miss Hannigan, and it felt like it was sort of an opportunity to sort of reinvent Miss Hannigan yeah. a little bit, or yeah. that was sort of the goal, right. but then it felt like maybe ultimately you were maybe shackled. Is that, that's just my perception yeah, you know, from funny. the audience. My job ultimately is to do the director's vision, right. you know? Yeah. And uh, James Lepine talk, and I talked a lot about it, but it felt like they had sort of a, a template before I got there, mm. and that I was sort of pushed into the template. and. You know, they can't all be home runs. Right. I have a lot of grief about that because I felt like I could have sort of brought why they hired me to the role. Yeah. Um, but I felt like it was more of a well, well worn sort of version of Miss mm. Hannigan. Yeah. Which is okay. And I thought I did that well, but I think there's a lot of other people that could have done that maybe better than I, mm. I could have. Mm -hmm. um, what I proposed, I, I really ultimately was not able to, um, to, uh, what do you call it? Um, blossom. Mm. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think it wasn't one of my best. I didn't feel like ah. Right. I would just come off stage every night and go, I did the best I could. <laughs> and you could ask anybody backstage. I'd be like, I did the best I could. <laughs> I did the best I could. <laughs> I feel like it didn't quite. I didn't quite get to bring mm -hmm. the thing that sort of makes me. Why they hired me, right. but that's okay, right. and it, it happens, and it, they can't all be home runs. Do you want to do it now? Do you want to give me some of some of your? No, Hannigan? thank you. Maybe the rest of the interview you can no, miss thank Hannigan. You. No. no, thank you. I loved it though. I will tell you that it was one of the most incredible experiences because how many times will I get to do a Broadway show where children can come? Right. And I had so many children come backstage, and they got to meet me and see who I was. Yeah. See the costumes, try the costumes on. If you have a contest on your website of everybody who took a picture with the boa with Miss Hannigan, <laughs> you will have over a thousand applicants. That's adorable. Pictures of people. And you had just become a mother at the time, too. I mean, you know, oh you were new God. to motherhood. And oh, that's the other thing. I had had a baby five weeks before I started five rehearsals. Weeks, right. So literally, it was like, this is so personal, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The orphans would sing. And I would start to lactate. <laughs> you know that when mothers have new children, they hear a baby cry, a child's voice, their body says, oh, the child needs milk? That's what would happen <laughs> as I was Miss Hannigan. That's so amazing. Little girls, oh my God, I'm making milk. Da, 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 da. But that, that's where I was with that show. Did you, uh, did you see Cameron Diaz as Miss Hannigan? Cameron in the Diaz. New, I the didn't see Annie it yet, movie? but I've seen previews. I'm going to take my children. I'm going to take my children. Will Gluck, the director, is, is a great friend. He did the Michael J. Fox show with me. Oh, right. Okay. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I actually helped him cast her. What I was like, mean? oh, she's great. She's good. Oh, she's perfect for that. You gave thumbs up to. I did. She was. Um, I didn't help him cast her. He, <laughs> he pitched. I, I actually came up with the name. He's like, how did you know that I was thinking of her? 
because oh. another movie star fell out. And I was like, what about? Interesting. What about this person? Wow, what about Cameron? Uh, wow, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I she went to casting great. Katie Fenner. I should. Be, I'm, I'm always casting other people. Could I'm be like, a whole other thing. You know who would be great in this part? I know you want me, but Sherry <laughs> Renee Scott would be great. <laughs> or Heidi Blickenstaff. <laughs> Heidi Blickenstaff is a star to be born. I know she's already a star to us, but she, man. How She's um, fantastic. how are your kids? They're so great. Yeah, I had the flu today. I don't know if you noticed. So you have to like sanitize. You, you look great. Sanitize. You, you say you're sick, but you look great. I feel very powerful in this chair. I think it's taking the flu it's away. It's the height of the arms, right? It's like it's like I feel like Donald Trump. I'm like you're all fired. All right, I'm glad. I want you to feel powerful. Or hired. You're all hired. You feel better. Um, uh, the kids. With a question. The kids. The kids are wonderful. They're Darren, so. My, so so your hubby. My husband is. I've been watching him be kind of a dick on the isn't affair. Isn't he fantastic? People stop him like at the grocery store with the kids in that's the like stroller. That's like a big breakout. Hey man, you should really be nicer to women. Yeah, he's Love a you dick. Love your affair. He's he's extraordinary. D so he he's good at that. He's at the, that, great that, at it. He's doing affair. a show now called Rashida Speaking. Yeah. Uh, which you should all go see. It's uh, the new group. Yep. At the Signature Theater, and it's Diane Weist and Tanya Pinkins. Yes. And Patricia Connolly, directed by Cynthia Nixon, her directorial debut. And it's some of the greatest acting I've ever seen. And he plays another jerk, so you mustn't think my husband. So what's, what's it like being married to a guy that's, that's excelling at he the jerk? He's the sweetest, most vulnerable, <laughs> wonderful, funny, uh, just vibrant, sort of private person I know. And he knows me so well. And I'm so glad he married me. How did he sweep you up your feet? Oh. Like, like if you had to like just you figure know, out one thing he did right. I'm gonna cry. We met doing um, Beyond Therapy at Williamstown right, and right. Um, Williamstown and the Sag Harbor. Another Bay, drama Bay you did. Theater. Another drama of yours. Drama, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he walked into rehearsal, and I looked across the room and I went, "I'm done. There you are." And I, I feel like I know him as well today as I knew him that first day. Wow. And the thing that I loved about him is that any questions I had, you know how women are like, oh, I don't know what he means by that, or he didn't text me, or what, what does he mean by that? Or does he, well, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, the, the, where you get the committee yeah. together and you're like, so what do you think he means? Or what? Uh -huh. With Darren, uh, all I had to do was ask him, and he'd tell me. Huh. And then there was no like, does Completely he want to go to lunch with me? Does he not want to go to lunch? He was like, um, yeah, you're, you're coming to lunch with me. Yeah, you're not invited. You're not invited. You're coming to lunch with me. Wow. And it was like so sexy and confident and wonderful. And I was dating somebody else at the time. And uh, I woke up with him immediately. And you were like, oh, crap. Yeah, give me some of that. <laughs> and and it was, it's just been like kind of best friends and like in love from the first day we met. So you guys have two little boys, Ty and Wes, right? Ty and Wes. Ty is his full name? Ty, just Ty. Just Ty. Ty not like Goldstein. Tyrone or? Ty. Just Ty. 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 And Who's West? Tyrone from the Eugene O'Neill play? Tyrone, the actor. Yeah, Tyrone. The Long Day's Journey, is that it? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, just Ty. Just Ty. And just and Wes. And just Wes. I love it. It's like you gave them nicknames as their names. Yeah, just it's like cool. they're, they're strong, clean Yeah, it's names. cool. I like it. I remember it. I w w what should we name our first son, and I thought, you know, Darren's really good friends with Ty Burrell. They're, they're friends of ours, uh -huh. Holly and Ty. Uh, from Modern Family, yeah. Holly's his wife, and uh, get him back to do another play. Time. Oh, he will. He will. Oh, he, he certainly will. That. He's just busy. Okay. Um, Being a big sitcom star. Yeah, and a movie star, and a t commercial star, and a voiceover star. <laughs> He's a wonderful person. I remember. I, I've never forgotten the name Ty. When a person's name is Ty, uh -huh. I've never. You know, sometimes you go like, "Is your name Michael or Mark?" Or right, right. You don't forget like Ty. Mitch or like all the crew guys are either like <laughs> Mike, you know, Fred. Mark. Yeah, Mike, yeah. Fred, and Mark, right, right? here. These guys, See? Mike, Fred, and Mark. Uh, you know, but you sometimes you're like, are you Mark or Fred? Or, uh, <laughs> and um, Mark or Mike. And so Ty, I never forgot. So I thought, oh, that's a good name for a baby and, a, and for a man. So I actually, Yeah, I, like I love it. And then Wes was my cousin's name, and I always loved my cousin, and, uh, and Darren loved the name Wes. And so I was like, well, I asked my cousin, and he's like, yeah, you can put my name. What are they into? Ooh. What are your boys into? Like, tell me a little, just a little bit about them. Wes loves trucks. He's the little one. He's two. And uh, loves trucks, loves sitting on the floor and trains and trucks and just like, uh -huh. like his imagination <laughs> is just like, he could watch videos about trucks all the time. He has this book, everyone watching this is terribly bored right now, by the way, but um, I want to talk about it. He has books about trucks, so we okay. read about trucks, excavators and... Trucks? And yeah. He'll be a truck driver. Hay squeezers and tractors and milk trucks and ice cream trucks and cool. yeah, he loves that. And then Ty loves, loves, loves music. He just turned uh -oh. four this week 
and he loves music. He could tell you all of Bruno Mars songs, all of Katy Perry songs. Oh, good taste. Pippin, the cat. Pippin. He loves Pippin. He, he loves. Can, he sings um, Pippin. Like, yeah. you know, he loves the, the opening number, the, the Ben Vereen opening number of Pippin. Oh, wow. loves, oh. loves the Tony's performance of Les Mis. He loves um, Bruno Mars. He loves Frank Sinatra, the Beach Boys. He loves 50s music. He can tell you, he'll be in a grocery store and he goes, oh yeah, that's Firework by Katy Perry. <laughs> or that's a different version of Firework. That's the kids club version of Firework. Wow. Or, yeah, we're really into high school musical right now. Okay. So I do Gabriella and he does Zach Efron. Like you sing with him? Oh, yes. Oh, that's yes. adorable. Yeah. Do you have like a little karaoke machine at home? No, but he, you know, it's funny. The other day, just two days ago, he sat in front of the couch and he went, okay, mom, dad, I'm going to do a show. And I went, oh my gosh, it's starting. It made me happy because I've never said like, this is how you do a show. But he yeah, comes, yeah. comes to the theater. And I love it. He came, he and my, um, Wes came all throughout Annie. and. So wait, you're also, I wanted to ask you, you're on that net, the new Netflix show. Yes, yes, it's Norbert called Leo Bloodline. Butts. Bloodline. Bloodline. Norbert Leo Butts plays my husband. Oh, oh And we're oh, two married. very big personalities. You're Mrs. Butts. Mrs. Butts, I am. <laughs> it's so funny because we got on set and we're two very big personalities and we had to play these like drama characters. <laughs> it's really fun. We have such a you great time together. You filmed it in together. Florida. In the Keys. In the, Florida, Keys. the Florida Keys. Wow. Key Largo. Yeah. Wow. And, um, and it's dark? What's it like? It's wonderful. Sissy Spacek is yeah. uh, my mother-in-law. She's amazing cast. incredible. And, um, of course, Sam Shepard. If we're going to binge watch it, March Yes, 20th. yes, binge, binge, binge That's watch. That's a binge. Yeah. It's a binge thing. Binge it's a watch. Netflix thing. I have I'm excited very, for that. Is there anything else you want people to know before we go? Come see. It's only a play. Because it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. And it's, it's so much fun. It's super serious. You're gonna laugh, but no, no, but for I her, so it's super cool. serious. I'm gonna get made so much fun of that. In That's your okay. head, make fun of me. No, but, it's, but it's, me, it's it's so fine. it's really fun. At what theater? It moves theaters. And now it's at the. Jacobs. I know how crazy is that? It moved theaters. It's at the it, it was at Which the, one are you at now? The Jacob, the Bernie the, Jacob. It's at the Jacobs on 45th Street. The Jacobs by the Bernie, Angelica Ballard and the audience and the Hel Elephant Man. Helen Mirren, Bradley Cooper, Glenn Close, you. That's the lineup yeah, on 45th Street. Exactly. Martin Short. There's a lot of people. Exactly. Well, it starts exactly. on Broadway. It's, it's like, exciting. It's fun back, back, backstage in the alley. Wow. Hey, Glenn Close. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, what's up, Glenn? No, really, I do see her a lot. She's so lovely. She sent me a little note backstage. The, the Delicate Balance people sent me a little, like, welcome to the, welcome to the alley. How There's sweet. a chipmunk that lives in the alley So uh, that came on their set from Virginia or something. Wow. And so my kids met the chipmunk that Glenn Close introduced me to. <laughs> It's the way it is on Broadway, Paul. What can I tell you? Uh, I adore you. I Thank always you. love to see what you do next. I can't wait for your 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th shows and onward. Katie, thank you for being here. Everyone needs to see it's only a play at the Jacobs Theater. Don't go next door. It's not there anymore. <laughs> and uh, it's always great to see you. You too, Paul. Thank Thanks you so for much. Me. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.